for being here today in Leeds. Wow, what a turnout. God, it feels so good. I forgot what this felt like. The big stage, the media, the fans, the atmosphere, the anticipation for a massive, massive night on Saturday night in Leeds. 20,000 people at the Headingley Stadium. The Leeds Rhinos transformed for an epic night of boxing live and exclusive on the zone all around the world. This is one of the best cards we have ever put on. And on Saturday night, you are going to have a night and an experience you will never forget. Inside the stadium, inside the ropes, the fans in the arena will get one of the best nights of live boxing they have ever witnessed. And on screen, we will bring you the best talent lineup in boxing. This Saturday, Laura Woods leading the presentation with Tony Bellew. Over to Darren Barker and Chris Lloyd. Then we mix it up with Mike Costello, the legend, and Andy Lee. What a team we have here, and what a night we have. And so many fighters to get through ahead of this card on Saturday night. We're going to start with the fighters underneath us here and I'm going to start with a couple of local fighters that have a massive chance to sign. Manny Wright, let's start with you. I just saw you walking up on the top table. I think you thought you were going to be up here. Those days will come. Those days will come. But firstly, the pro debut, part of the Nick Manners and, and Warrington camp as well. Massive opportunity for you to make your pro debut on Saturday night. My check one, two. Can you hear me? Um, yeah, just looking forward to it, man. I can't believe it. Um, fighting in my hometown of Leeds. I went to uni in Head in there. I used to live in Head in there, literally two minutes walk from the stadium. And it's just it's surreal even seeing this on here. So I can't yeah, wait. Yeah. Looking forward to my you can fight. That, man. You can take that with you. I can, I can take this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll keep this. Good. I'll leave it here for now, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm just looking forward to it. I used to live in Head in there. Went to university in Head in there. Um, I went to school with Zaid. Um, I've known Jack most of my life. I trained with Brandon, I've known Hopi. Um, so just looking forward to being able to showcase my skills with all these guys. Great opportunity for you, but as well with the Leeds fighters as well. And I know a big part of uh, this man here's future, I oh, mate. The right. champ, Josh, Josh Warrington. So it's a huge fight and that for Josh and a huge night for Leeds boxing in general. Yeah, it's a great night and um, we couldn't do it without Josh. Josh is um, headlining the show. Um, he's brought a lot of um, the fans back into boxing in Leeds. He's been part of loads of main events. Um, I remember when he was selling out the Leeds Arena, um, he let me used to come backstage with him. And just the atmosphere there is crazy. I think out of all the shows that you do do, the Leeds crowd are probably the best, the loudest, the greatest. And we've got one of the best boxers. Um, and they'll showcase his skills on Saturday night and show us uh, all what he's made of. Well, Mally, good luck for your pro debut on Saturday. Brandon Stansfield. Thank you, mate. Brandon Stansfield, 1-0. and Another big opportunity for you as well, part of this huge night for Leeds Boxing on Saturday. Ready to go at Headingley this weekend. Yeah, yeah, this is... Um, it worked Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a massive opportunity for me. Um, big stage now. Coming from Bradford, um, I'll tell my last one, jumping at this one. Yeah, it's a massive opportunity for me and I cannot wait. Obviously as well, plenty of support. I know you guys have shifted so many tickets yourself, all you guys from Leeds. Going to be uh, looking for a victory and then nip back, get changed and watch the main action as well. And of course, Josh Warrington topping the bill. Um, yeah, um, I did quite well with tickets. I did a lot really. Um, yeah, one of the first ones on. Um, get changed and watch uh, Warren and do his thing again. Thanks, Brendan. Someone who's done a huge amount of tickets for this show, Jack Bateson, undefeated prospect, huge future from Leeds as well, ex-GB fighter, extremely talented. Felix Garcia, welcome. Um, we have a translator up here for Felix Garcia. A big opportunity for you, Felix, and uh, a great fighter in Jack Bateson. It's going to be a wild atmosphere on Saturday. Una gran noche para, para ti, van a ver en, fans ahí, va, va a ser una locura, en, supongo que es una gran oportunidad para ti venir aquí. Bueno, primeramente darme gracias a Dios por estar aquí, verdad, y, sí, me siento muy contento por estar aquí y me he preparado muy bien a conciencia para estar aquí, para dar lo mejor y a ver qué se da. So, first and foremost, thanks for the opportunity uh, to be here. I'm extremely happy to be here and I've prepared extremely hard for this night and hopefully you'll see the best of me on Saturday.
Thank you, Felix. Jack, as I said, huge following watching you on Saturday night at Headingley and a really good fight for you as well. Important moment for your career. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm buzzing to be back, back here in Leeds uh, with a crowd. Um, now Covid's on its way out. Um, thank you, of course, for the opportunity, Eddie. And yeah, I'm looking to shine and uh, it won't be the last time that I'll be on one of these big cards. So yeah, looking forward to it. I read a, an interview with you about the, you know, the, the, the path that, that Josh Warrington has built for fighters like you coming from Leeds. Obviously, looking at, at Josh's success and a lot of respect for him about what he's paved the way he's paved the way for, for young fighters in Leeds to go and follow in his footsteps. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've, I've known Josh since we were, we were young kids um, growing up and I want to I wanna be where he is now and, you know, he's, he's set, the, set the way for us, he's paved the path and um, I'm sure that one day, if I keep working hard, I can be where he is and doing it for the city. I look forward to your fight with Felix Garcia on Saturday. Another tremendous fight, all leads action. Zahid Hussein against Hopi Price. Zahid, we'll, we'll start with you. This fight originally scheduled, I think last year at, at Fight Camp or certainly in a, in a show behind closed doors. I'm so happy we waited. You get to do it in front of 19,000 people on Saturday night. Yeah, um, it's worked out a lot better having it on uh, anything. We'll just swap your mic, Zahid. Uh, sound guys are listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to you. Hopefully, is your is your one going? <laughs> Sounds. None of them's working. Oh, there we go. This one's working now. Hello. This is all very confusing. Okay. OB, you crack on. Zahid, we're coming to you shortly once the sound guys pull their fingers out. Right. <laughs> OB, big opportunity for you on Saturday night. It's only a couple of weeks ago at Fight Camp. Great fight for you. Probably uh, if it was over eight rounds, as, as we thought it might be originally, you would have got the stoppage. But this is a massive step up for you. Big opportunity in front of a huge crowd and a real good, solid test against Zahid Hussain. Yeah, well, first of all, it's good to keep busy. So uh, I'm glad I got out two weeks ago and... Uh... Now, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be back home, back in front of me, my hometown and my home fans. And uh, like you say, so it's another step up, another step forward in my career. But um, there's a lot of good fighters on this show and a, and a lot of fighters from me. But um, I've come to steal the show Saturday night. Obviously moving a lot quicker than anticipated because of, of COVID and, and the, the lack of opportunities. But now on a great run, this will be a second fight in, what, three weeks or so. And uh, after this, really you're looking towards sort of domestic titles as well. Yes, definitely. Uh, Another good performance this weekend, and then uh, looking to step up again, and uh, it won't be long before the domestic titles are coming my way. Zahid, we'll give it another go. Whoa, they've gone through it this time. <laughs> Zahid, uh, as I said, this fight was originally scheduled before. Thank God we, uh, we're doing it on Saturday at Headingley. Big fight for you, huge gap in experience in the professional game, but it's going to be a cracker. Yeah, um, I'm definitely looking forward to it in front of uh, 20,000 people. Um, and also, I'd just like to thank Matchroom, my manager Steve Wood, and my coach uh, for spending time and training me. Big opportunity for you. We know Hopi is, uh, was a tremendous amateur, very inexperienced still as a pro. Is it about using your experience on, on Saturday nights? It's, it's must win for both of you guys, really. Yeah, um, I'm just going to do what I do best. Um, and um, yeah, experience is going to play a, a major part in the, on Saturday night. Well, good luck to that in the, the Leeds Derby. Hopi Price against Zahid Hussain. We go to our first female fight on the card, Ebony Bridges against Miley's Gangwell. Miley's, we'll start with you via our translator over there. Last time we tried to do it in English, it didn't really work very well for me. So, uh, Miley's, welcome back. We saw you take a fight with Ellie Scottney at short notice. This is another great fight for you. But uh, it's okay, I understand. Um, yeah, it's a good fight because uh, it will be in my perfect weight category. So I think I can uh, bring something that I can't uh, bring uh, the last time I was here. So I'm very exciting. I hope that uh, it will be a very good show. Oh, very, very good English, Marnie. Uh, well done, well done. 
just make a note to get a refund for the French translator. As well. <laughs> Marlies, thank you very much. Ebony, um, again, as, as I said to Hopi, fight camp for you, back in action again. Um, shout out to Enzo Macronelli and the team you've been training there down with in Wales. Um, we expect a great fight with Gangbrook. She's, she's all action. We saw that at late notice against Ellie Scottney and, and looking to build off a great stoppage win against Beck Connolly. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm actually really excited about this fight. Um, watching her fight with, with Ellie, um, I think she has a great style. And I think our styles are going to gel really well together. So I think um, with that, I think it's going to make it a very exciting fight. She's tough as. And, um, you know, I love, I love tough opponents and opponents who like to have a dig and like to fight. So um, I'm looking forward to, you know, something really exciting there. And, um, yeah, another, another good performance by myself. I'm only getting better. I'm feeling stronger than ever. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to putting, um, showing you all more of what I've got come Saturday night. Yeah, I saw uh, some of your action from the workout last night. It looked like you're punching very, very hard. Beck Connolly, is, is, we know, is super durable. She had, what, six, seven weeks for that fight. She was fighting at her perfect weight. That was a, a big statement to, to stop her and get her, out, get her out there. But you really feel like your power is, is coming through now in the division. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, obviously training with Brian Cohen and Kaylee Rees in America and having that, like, eight weeks in Philadelphia, I'm really focusing on, um, you know, footwork and balance and, and planning my feet. You know, that's... You know, everyone, like, I mean, we all know, well, I know, you know, people know that I'm strong, but if you can't get in position, you don't have the, the feet for it. It's, it's, um, doesn't really, it's not really effective, but now I just feel like I'm really nailing that, and we've seen that with Beck, um, about the positioning, about the setups, and about planting the feet to, to throw those shots, um, to get the, my full power into it, and yeah, definitely feeling strong as, um, my cut for this weight, um, my cut for this fight was easy, you know, it was, like I said, I just fought four weeks ago, um, and I'm hungry as ever, you know, I love to fight. There's only two and a half rounds last time, so I'm, I'm, I'm hungry, to, hungry to punch on. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you, Ebony. Good luck, mine is as well. We go to our main championship card now. This fight is, you know, a headline fight on any card, but here the fans are going to get to see this one earlier in the night, still, on, of course, on the live broadcast as well. The IBO World Lightweight title between Giovanni Straffon and Maxi Hughes. This fight is, is a tremendous fight for so many different reasons. Storylines and narratives always make great fights, and here's one with Giovanni Straffon, who came over last time into the bubble and completely iced James Tennyson in one round in brutal fashion to win that IBO world title. Straight away, him and his team accepted the challenge of Maxi Hughes, and when you look at Maxi Hughes' story, we called him the Cinderella man now, a guy who, quite frankly, looked like his career was pretty much over takes a fight with John O'Carroll at a couple of weeks' notice, probably less, beats John O'Carroll, goes over to Kazakhstan, beats another great fighter there to win the international title, then goes and wins the British lightweight title and now fights for the IBO world title this weekend. It's a tremendous story. Maxi, you deserve a lot of credit. I know your confidence is sky high. This is a fight to get really excited about. Yeah, I'm uh, grateful for the opportunity. I've, I've worked out. Um, been in the pro game 11 years, but I believe I am only just getting started. Um, Weber's oldest world champion, I'm going to try and break that record. Um, and a lot of people referring to me now as a Cinderella man, and that couldn't be more true. It were only this morning, my missus said to me, You know, before you go out this house, this house needs cleaning. So, <laughs> literally, Cinderella man, I've been cleaning the house. Um, but when I go to ball on Saturday night, I don't know, I'll, I'll be coming home with two glass slippers on. <laughs> Maxi, the, um, the, the way that your career is transformed, I remember the early days, your fights with Cardo, your fights with um, Martin Ward. Is it, is, it, is it been just perseverance and experience and understanding the sport that's. What, how has this transformation taken place? I mean, you sit now you know, with a chance to really take a piece of that lightweight division, which is red hot. And you know, we know that this is a big night for you on Saturday, but really one victory away from just being involved in some, some crazy fights in the division. Yeah, I think that's right. Just uh, experience. Otherwise, you know, you can't, you can't buy, beg, borrow or steal experience. You have to go out and earn it and doing it as long as they have. And, and being around some top domestic uh, opposition, it's all led me to where I am. And, you know, it's like everything leads to where it is. You know, the, the old cliche sayings, everything happens for a reason. So maybe every, every fight I've took and not got uh, the decision, it's all led me to this. And now's the time to 
capitalise on it and now's the time to reap the rewards of the resilience, the hard work, the dedication and you know, put my name up there in um, top ten across the world, uh, across hopefully all the sanctioning bodies. Um, you know, while I'm in this red hot form, get the win on Saturday, you know, you better put me in with Canelo while I'm on this form before it runs out. <laughs> We're in perfect symmetry here between, obviously, yourself and your training partner, Josh Warrington as well, and Giovanni Strafon and Maurizio Lara, two guys that came over from Mexico and just completely tore up the script. It's a big night for both of you, and I know you've shared some, some hard training sessions with, with Josh Warrington and, and egging him on to do the job on Saturday night as well. Absolutely, yeah. It's been, you know, Josh has uh, been a great world champion. Not only did he win the world title, he defended it successfully in great fashion, so you now we only need to look at what he's doing in gym and just, just copy what Josh does, because he's laid out how, how you become a world champion, stay world champion, so um, we, 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 get, we get on well as well aside from boxing, so it's been brilliant to, to be bouncing off each other in gym and you know, we usually sit like two old tarts in gym after gym for an hour just chatting and you know, and it helps, it's, you know, we talk about all sorts, but, you know, obviously they're mainly the boxing, so we're bouncing ideas off, you know, game plans, things that we could work on and, you know, try them out and, uh, and we help each other out that way. So it's been brilliant to share a training camp with him. And finally, we saw, it was an electric one round of Giovanni Strafon. Um, James Tennyson probably did all the things that you're going to try not to do, and which is stand in front of him and just trade up early doors. Is, is that... Something that you've got to mix up on Saturday night. Still a little bit of an unknown quantity, Strathorn, but one thing we know, he's got plenty of heart, he's extremely excited and he can really punch. Yeah, it's clear to see that. Um, you know, even if we didn't get the, if we didn't see the Tennyson fight, if that fight never happened and we got to fight Giovanni, um, you know, we just look at his record and see that he's, he's obviously heavy handed. So we would go in that approach of, you know, let's not test how hard he can it by standard of trading with him. So um, I bought myself some nice new Isaac Woody trainers, so do a good couple of laps on Saturday night. <laughs> 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 Cheers, Maxi. Good luck. Giovanni, welcome back. Um, last time out, you broke many hearts when you knocked out James Tennyson, but it was also amazing to see your happiness. And uh, now you've got to take care of business again on Saturday. Giovanni, bienvenido en primer lugar. La última vez. Rompiste muchos corazones británicos aquí, pero fue tremendo también verte eh, lograr lo que, lo que lograste, a ver la felicidad en la cara también. Eh, obviamente, te enfrentas a otra pelea desde sábado. Sí, claro. Buenas, buenas tardes a todos. Este, claro que es otra pelea. De antemano, como lo he dicho, esto no es México Inglaterra versus Inglaterra, esto es Giovanni versus Max Hugh. Y realmente es otra pelea. Yo vengo por el cinturón, para mí el título está vacante. Yo vengo con la misma intención de anteriormente, con esa hambre, con esas ganas de llevarme el cinturón. Él para mí es una piedra en el camino que me hace estorbo para lo que quiero. Es un ladrón al cual no voy a dejar que se robe ese plato de comida para mi familia. Y pues espero que venga a pelear, porque yo vengo a pelear. Yo realmente vengo a reiterar por qué estoy aquí. Y pues yo no vengo a un maratón. Yo creo que la, la pista de, de correr está en otro lado. Yo vengo a pelear y este es un ring. So yeah, first and foremost, uh, thanks for uh, the welcome. Uh, it's great to be back here in, in England. And what I would say about the fight is that it's not a, a fight between Mexico and the UK. It's me and my opponent in the ring. And what I will say is that you know I have the hunger when I go into these fights. I look at this as if this belt was vacant. Um, and I have to go in and win it, and I have to show that hunger to do that. Any fighter that's in front of me is a block in the road for me, and I have to take them away. And they're also a thief because they will be taking uh, money from my family. So I, I come to fight, so I really hope that he also is going to come to fight. Finally, uh, Maxi Hughes talks about what could come after this as well. We know the Tennyson fight was a big win, but if he wins on Saturday, there's some just huge opportunities in the division. Obviamente, eh, seguramente no quiere pensar más allá de la pelea del sábado, pero en esa división habrá muchas grandes oportunidades si llegaras a ganar esta pelea. Claro, claro, pero ahorita el enfoque está en Max. Yo no me adelanto, a mí no me gusta adelantarme, como lo ha hecho él. Él está pensando en David Haney. También este, Davidson estaba pensando en Jair Bota y no se, no, se, no se acordaban que tienen a, a una persona que tiene mucha hambre. 
que tiene mucho deseo de salir adelante y pues primero tiene que pasarme a mí y para pasarme a mí tiene que matarme y yo creo que no están dispuestos para eso y pues van a una guerra, van realmente a un suicidio conmigo y pues vamos a ver qué pasa. El 4 de septiembre vamos a gritar viva México. So first, first and foremost, uh, I'm definitely not overlooking uh, Max in this in, in this instance, um, and he shouldn't either. It's uh, dangerous when, when fighters do that. I want to show that I have the hunger. You know, if he wants to win this fight, he'll have to kill me, um, and that's what's going to happen. And on the 4th of September, you can be assured that we'll be sh shouting Viva Mexico. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you, Maxi. Tremendous fight. We go to another tremendous fight. I think it was about five or six weeks ago, we were absolutely devastated to find out that Con Jennifer Hand, former world champion herself, the mandatory challenger for Katie Taylor's IBF world title. Jennifer, we'll start with you. Uh, great to see you here, um, seeing your interviews as well. Obviously, respect for Katie Taylor, but a massive opportunity, you and your team here, to make history and become the undisputed lightweight world champion. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you for Katie for giving me this opportunity. Um, my team and I have traveled a long way, all the way from El Paso, Texas, USA, to be here to show the world what we have. I mean, I've worked my entire life for this kind of opportunity and I'm excited to be here and it's my time. You've seen the rise of, of, of women's boxing. It's been yes. incredible, particularly over the last couple of years. Now, many fighters have been responsible. Katie, I feel, was, was the principal of that. But when you were world champion, perhaps these kind of opportunities and these kind of stages didn't present themselves. And to get back into that mix and to, to, to win a, a fight like this, with the, the way women's boxing is right now, would be life-changing. Absolutely. It's already been life-changing. I mean, we've worked hard. Um, I've overcome many, many obstacles to get to this point. And I'm, I've never fought in this kind of stage. So this is going to be amazing. And for Katie, I'm sure you've watched all action Absolutely. all the time, and you as well. It's going to be a tremendous fight. Yes, yes. I, I do have a lot of respect for Katie. I've studied her, and it's time to shine on Saturday. Thank you, Jennifer. Katie, back doing what you love, and uh, your last couple of fights have been behind closed doors. Um, we know that you have boxed, of course, in, in huge outdoor stadiums, Madison Square Garden, Barclays Centre, Philadelphia, Wembley, Millennium Stadium, and, and now in Leeds, which is a very important city for your family as well, and unbelievable to be back fighting in front of so many people. Yeah, it is. This is uh, the first fight in a long time where I've actually fought from the a live crowd again, and the fact that it's here in Leeds, um, some of my best memories as, as, uh, as a kid is uh, visiting the city, going to the Legion United game in, in, in Ellen Road, and um, this city has a, obviously a special place in my heart, so never thought I'd actually have a chance to actually fly here, so it's, it's, I'm just so excited about it. Unbelievable that you are an East fan, it's not actually, I just want to confirm it's not something I made up for a press conference. He was a Legion Idol fan. Obviously this fight, a tremendous fight for you as well, owning all the belts that you do, you have to go through these mandatory challenges. Sometimes in boxing you see a mandatory challenger that maybe many feel shouldn't be there, but Jennifer's been there, she's done it, former world champion. This is, this is a real test for you. This is a huge fight for, for both of us and um, I don't overlook anybody. I, don't, um, I can't afford to get complacent on any other fights when you get complacent, that's when you actually start losing fights. Um, this is a, I, I, I have prepared for this fight just like I prepare for, for any fight. I'm expecting a tough challenge on Saturday and I'm prepared for that. I don't need to ask you about your, your hunger and drive. I guess many people will be asking, how long does she have left? But you feel better than ever. You and Ross had a great camp and, and looking to put on a real performance on Saturday. Yeah, I feel great. Um, I know that I can't do this forever, but I still feel, feel very, very fresh right now. I, I still have plenty more years left in the ring. And um, yeah, this training camp has gone uh, great. I feel um, sharp and strong. And I can't wait to produce one, one of the best performances on Saturday night. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Jennifer. The undisputed world lightweight titles on the